Hello, it's Ananda from Vital Natural Online and today my topic is uh, skin dehydration. Um, a lot of people also equate that to skin dryness. And so over the next few, well I'm going to do a couple of YouTube videos on this because I actually have a lot to say about it. Um, so some of the topics I will be covering include um, what occurs in the skin to cause skin dehydration and water loss, um, what products you can use to help repair and maintain water hydration in the skin, um, including a couple of different types of products and, and a closer look at some of the ingredients and the actions on the skin as to how they work to hold that moisture in and what you can do um, on the inside, what foods and supplements you can uh, take to help improve skin hydration. So quite a bit to cover. So today we'll look specifically at what causes skin dehydration and one class of products that actually will help to um, repair skin hydration if you like or repair the uh, protective layer on the skin. So first of all, um, there is a protective waterproof barrier on the skin that actually prevents transepidermal water loss or TUL. So it literally um, stops you know, moisture evaporation from the skin or excessive moisture evaporation from the skin. And part of that barrier is the acid mantle um, and that has a slightly acidic pH. Now if something that uh, topical or um, you know, internally that actually causes a change in the pH and makes it more become more um, alkaline, it becomes disrupted and it starts to lose its protective properties. So it's a balance between the pH and the oils of the skin or that waterproof barrier that actually help to maintain um, the protective layer and therefore stop transepidermal water loss. Okay, so Dehydration actually occurs when water and oils and the water and oils of that protective layer are out of balance, um, and this can occur from a number. Of, sorry, this can occur for a number of reasons. The first one is evaporation of the moisture in dry environments, um, air conditioning or cold dry environments with low humidity. Uh, classic examples of um, such situations where you'll lose more water from the skin just because the outside environment is dry and the water is attracted or evaporated off the skin into the dry environment. Now obviously this is less likely to occur in humid environments where there's lots of heavy moisture in the air and so the water doesn't evaporate from your skin and as easily. Wind is another one um, when you know there's dry winds that will evaporate water from your skin and also excess water exposure um, if you're swimming around in chlorinated pools for a long time despite the fact that you're actually you know swimming in water you, that can still disrupt that um, acid um, mantle and it can also disrupt the, um, the water and oils balance on the skin which then leads to water loss at a later stage. So that's one factor, um, the evaporation of water from the skin. The second one is damage to the barrier, um, and so this can happen from topical ingredients, um, some that are too harsh, and I've seen this occur with uh, very, very, very strong glycolic acid treatments. Um, it can happen with surfactants such as sodium lauryl sulfate that are just too strong or more like detergent than cleansers for the skin. Um, using a, um, petrochemical-based soaps also can cause that to happen instead of a cleanser or a pH balanced soap. Um, it also can occur if you've got um, low levels of good fats in your body and you're actually drinking less water. So if you're dehydrated um, in general, well your skin will show up that dehydration. And the low levels of good fats mean that, uh, well, a little explanation there is that um, every cell has a fatty membrane and um, basically this fatty membrane actually um, holds in the moisture and the good ingredients and allows the toxins to come out. And so the more fluid and flexible that fatty membrane is, um, and we're looking at the good fats, uh, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, they're fluid and flexible and so they allow the movement of um, nutrition and water into the cell and toxins out. If you have a diet that's, in, for instance, high in saturated fats, well, that cell wall becomes rigid, and that means that often the movement of nutrients and water in and out of the cells is restricted, and so it's less likely to hold on to water as you want it to. And then the, the fourth thing is ageing. As we age, our skin um, loses um, integrity, or the cells lose their ability to hold on to moisture as readily, and they all, we also reduce in oil um, production, which means that that protective layer is less likely to be there or less likely to withhold and stand up to the, um, the elements as it once would have. 
So there are a couple of the four key factors that will actually um, impact on trans epidermal water loss and if that's in excess, lead to skin dehydration. So there's a couple of ways that you can combat this. And the first way is um, actually holding the moisture into the skin. Okay, so we want to put a protective layer over the skin to literally hold moisture in so that it doesn't evaporate off. And um, the simplest way to do that is to hold moisture in, is hold moisture in the skin by using a slightly richer day moisturiser. Okay, you are going to lose um, um, you're going to lose moisture more readily from the skin during the day when you're outside in the elements, when you're moving around, or when you're in air conditioning. Generally, at night you tend to lose less moisture. So during the day, it's usually a slightly richer moisturiser, and that doesn't mean jumping from a light lotion up to a rich cream. It may just be going up to the next moisturiser. Um, and we'll talk about what to look for in those moisturisers so that you get the best results. So, um, first of all, just a little bit more on that while I find my next page. Um, so what that richer moisturiser does is create a moisture barrier and that's um, having an emollient effect and literally that's what um, stops TUL or trans epidermal water loss. So emollients also lubricate the skin so they tend to feel nice as well. And the added effect includes um, increased hydration of the stratus corneum, which is stratoconium, sorry, which is a layer of the skin. And um, this, in, um, by stopping moisture loss and allowing the retention of the water transported from the tissues below this layer, the net result is that the skin as a whole, the skin tissues as a whole, retain more moisture and it feels plumper and more soft. Okay. Um, so occlusive agents also reduce transepidermal water, water loss and increase hydration, and they basically prevent uh, hydration. As, uh, sorry, prevent evaporation as well. So most emollients will have an occlusive effect. Now, an example of an emollient is petroleum, but really petroleum is um, not ideal. The most significant point is that there's a risk of residue, um, so toxic residues in the petroleum products, and so you don't actually want your skin being exposed to toxic byproducts or toxic residues. The other thing is that um, petroleum has no nutritive value to the skin, so it's not actually going to support the skin in any other way. Yes, it'll stop water loss, but it's not going to, you know, su support the skin through um, the good fats or have an anti-inflammatory effect or carry nutrients into the skin and a lot of the other plant-based emollients will do this. And so some examples of those um, plant-based emollients are almond oil, rosehip, jojoba, uh, coconut oil, avocado and then shea and cocoa butter which are at the richer end. So if we look at the products, I'm going to start with um, the richest creams for people who have far more dehydrated skin. And these are water in oil emulsions. Basically, the significant proportion of the cream is oil or butter, and then you add some water-based ingredient in to make a, a cream. Um, and two examples I've got here are this one's Mukti Calendula Cream, um, and the other example, I, oh, I actually don't have a tester, is the Davida Ultra Hydrate. It's from the Davida RX range. Now, these are both great because they're rich in coconut oil, and they're also rich in shea butter, and that's one of the most significant ingredients, or two of the most significant ingredients in both of these creams. Secondly, they're both also unscented, and usually dehydrated skin is at far greater risk of being damaged than well hydrated skin. So that lack of protective barrier leaves the skin um, open to irritation from other ingredients such as um, artificial fragrances or colours or preservatives, um, synthetic preservatives in skincare. So using a richer unscented cream if your skin is very dehydrated and tends to redness or irritation is really good. So that's the Mukti Calendula Cream and the Davida RX Ultra Hydrate Cream are both very, very good examples. Okay. In the next um, YouTube video, I'm going to discuss what to use if your skin's dehydrated but rich creams don't suit your skin as well. They might cause congestion or they might feel not sinking easily. And the ideal is that you put a cream on and within five minutes it's sunk in completely. So uh, I look forward to talking to you again and we'll go from there. Thanks.